Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this, the 10th of August, Monday. Uh, today the church remembers St. Lawrence, a deacon at Rome who was martyred this day in the year five, uh, 258. Um, so Lawrence um, was originally born, um, we think, in Valencia in Spain um, and he grew up there and he was probably born on the uh, December 31st in uh, 225. Um, he met uh, the, uh, the who would the person who would later become Pope Sixtus II. That's a bit of a mouthful. Um, and so Pope Sixtus II was uh, Greek, and he was a very famous and well-respected uh, teacher of the faith. Eventually, they both left to head to Rome, and it was um, Pope Sixtus who um, in who ordained him deacon. Um, and uh, and as you, even though he was quite young and quite young as a deacon. Uh, Pope Sixtus II uh, appointed him as the first of the seven deacons to uh, who looked after the cathedral church. So basically, he was he was in charge of a lot, of, given a lot of responsibility at quite a young age. Um, so Lawrence was given charge of distributing the treasures to the poor. So effectively, the alms giving, making sure that those who had who were in need actually got what they needed. Um, and so this is actually the cause of his martyrdom. Um, because uh, there were still being persecutions of the of Christians at this time, and so in the uh, in the year uh, 258, the Roman uh, prefect came and said that he wanted to see all the treasures of the church. So St. Lawrence collected all the poor, the needy, the the widows, the orphan, all those who were um, in need, and he said. Behold, in these poor persons are the treasures which I promised to show you, to which I will add pearls and precious stones, those widows and consecrated virgins, which are the church's crown. Apparently the prefect was so angry at this response that he ordered a very large gridiron to be uh, constructed and he put, placed hot coals underneath it and he, uh, uh, he roasted St. Lawrence. And uh, legend has it that uh, St. Lawrence, um, after spending a considerable amount of time on one side, cheerfully declared, I'm well done on this side, turn me over. Uh, so St. Lawrence has, um, has got patronage, so he's the patron saint of cooks, chefs and comedians. I can't understand why. Uh, so we shall remember St. Lawrence uh, today in our prayers. And we shall think on those who are called to stand up for their faith to make that bold leap, to hold themselves fast, to be recognised as one of Christ's disciples. But as we come together, as we reflect on the weekend that has been for some of us who have suffered in the heat, let us spend a moment of stillness before we begin our prayers. Mm -hmm. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so as great is his mercy upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him, for he knows of what we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass. We flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from of old, and endures for ever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant, and remember his commandment to do them. Glory to the Father, add to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first psalm for this morning is Psalm 44. Rise up, O Lord, to help us. We have heard with our ears, O God, our forebears have told us. 
all that you did in their day, in time of old, how with your hand you drove out nations and planted us in, and broke the power of peoples and set us free. For not by their own sword did our ancestors take the land, nor did their own arm save them. But your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you are gracious to them. You are my King and my God, who commanded salvation for Jacob. Though through you we drove back our adversaries, through your name we drove down our foes. For I did not trust in my bow, it was not my own sword that saved me. It was you that saved us from our enemies, and put our adversaries to shame. We gloried in God all the day long, and were ever praising your name. But now you have rejected us and brought us to shame, and go not out with our armies. You have made us turn our backs on our enemies, and our enemies have despoiled us. You have made us like sheep to be slaughtered, and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a pittance, and made no profit on their sale. You have made us the taunt of our neighbours, the scorn and derision of those that are round about us. You have made us a byword among the nations, among the peoples they wag their heads. My confusion is daily before me, and shame has covered my face. At the taunts of the slanderer and reviler, at the sight of the enemy and avenger. All this has come upon us, though we have not forgotten you, and uh, have not played false to your covenant. Our hearts have not turned back, nor our steps gone out of your way. Yet you have crushed us in the haunt of jackals, and covered us with the shadow of death. If we have forgotten the name of God, or stretched out our hands to any strange God, will not God search it out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. But for your sake are we killed all the day long, and are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Rise up. Why sleep, O Lord? Awake, do not reject us for ever. Why do you hide your face, and forget our grief and oppression? Our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly cleaves to the earth. Rise up, O Lord, to help us, and redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Rise up, O Lord, to help us. Our Old Testament reading is a continuation of the first um, book of the prophet Samuel, chapter 19, verses 1 to 18. Saul spoke to his son Jonathan and to all his servants about killing David. But Saul's son Jonathan took great delight in David. Jonathan told David, my father Saul is trying to kill you, therefore be on guard tomorrow morning. Stay in a secret place and hide yourself. I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I will speak to my father about you. If I learn anything, I will tell you. Jonathan spoke well of David to his father Saul, saying to him, The king should not sin against his servant David, because he has not sinned against you, and because his deeds have been of good service to you. For he took his life in his hands when he attacked the Philistine. And the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why then will you sin against an innocent person by killing David without cause? Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore, As the Lord lives, I shall not be put to death he shall not be put to death. So Jonathan called David and related all these things to him. Jonathan then brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as before. Again there was war, and David went out to fight the Philistines. He launched a heavy attack on them, so that they fled before him. Then an evil spirit from the Lord came upon Saul, as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand. Whilst David was playing music, Saul sought to pin David to the wall with the spear, but he eluded Saul, so that he struck the spear into the wall. David fled and escaped that night. Saul sent messengers to David's house to keep watch over him, planning to kill him in the morning. David's uh, wife, Michal, told him, If you don't want to save your life tonight, tomorrow you will be killed. So Mikah told David, let David down through the window. He fled away and escaped. 
Mikko took an idol and laid it on the bed. She put a net of goat's hair on its head and covered it with clothes. When Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. Then Saul sent the messengers to see David for themselves. He said, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may kill him. When the messengers came in, the idol was in the bed, with a covering of goat's hair on its head. Saul said to Micah, Why have you deceived me like this, and let my enemy go, so that he, was, he has escaped? Micah answered Saul, He said to me, Let me go. Why should I kill you? Now David fled and escaped. He came to Samuel Arama and told him all that Saul had done to him. He and Samuel went and settled at Naoth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises who has triumphed gloriously, let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. All the earth, shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will baptize with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Whilst he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood before them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they had been staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. All of these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophet God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, 
The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was, the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the day that lies ahead of us. Be with us, Lord, in all that we do, say, and think. We pray that you will guide us, give us wisdom, help us to grow in faith and love for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the life and martyrdom of St. Lawrence. For his recognition that earthly treasures are not but those whom you love those who are poor and in need the widows the orphans they are the true treasures of the church help us always to recognize to give thanks for and to help those who are less fortunate may we never be blinded by material goods but always seeking you lord in your mercy Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for this benefice. We pray for those who live and work here. We pray for your churches and for your congregations. We pray for all those who are seeking you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are being affected by the coronavirus. We pray for those who are in self-isolation, those who are in quarantine, those who are shielding, those who have been re-entered into a renewed lockdown, those who are in hospital, and those who have died. Lord, be with those who are suffering. Be with their families as they have to watch. Be with all who are sick this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for those who are under St. Lawrence's patronage, for those who are cooks, chefs, for those who are comedians. We pray for all those who have been furloughed, for those who have had their livelihoods put in jeopardy. We pray for those who are anxious about what the next few weeks and months will hold. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in this world, Lord, an end to violence and an end to suffering. We pray for those places where there is violence and upset. We pray particularly for Beirut and the Lebanon at the moment. We pray for all those who have been affected by the explosion, for those who are protesting, for those who are trying to keep peace, for those who are grieving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for those who we are worried about, for those who are sick, those who are hurting, those who are depressed, for those who are mourning, and for those who feel lost. We pray that you will guide them, comfort them, keep them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who made Lawrence a loving servant of your people and a wise steward of the treasures of your church, fire us with his example to love as he loved and to walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please do join me this evening at 5 p.m. for evening prayer. Um, and just say that the churches will be open today in the morning. So if you wish to come for individual prayer, uh, then uh, please do come on down um, between 10 and 12. Uh, for St. Thomas's, you need to just double check on the, uh, on the notice board when you come to see if the church will be open. Um, but until we can see each other again, God bless, stay safe, and have a very good day. Avoid the thunderstorms and avoid too much heat. Bye-bye.